just having a quick beer and a sneaky fag. Okay, so today, um, I, let's just adjust that second. Um, yeah, today I, I basically, we had um, the dancing here uh, arrive in Dunedin. I went down, took a photo, um, took a little bit of a film clip down there, basically talked to the security crew and um, spent the rest of the afternoon digging around seeing what I could actually find on this boat. And I found a couple of interesting things which I thought were actually quite significant. And um, so I thought I'd actually ring up my colleagues in uh, TVNZ and uh, the Southern Times and give them the heads up. That turned out to be a waste of time because these guys had barely actually heard of Jeffrey Epstein, let alone his uh, girlfriend, uh, Gis Giselle, which again, part of the pronunciation, uh, Maxwell, who's been known as the uh, um, Epstein's pimp. Um, you know, and they were, you know, because of their general lack of interest, they were going, oh, oh, what's, what's, why is this significant? Well, maybe they want their privacy. And I kind of had to spell it out to them that, well, you know, if you turn around and look at uh, Giselle's, uh, just, and I know I'm not pronouncing that correctly, but, you know, look at their name alone, it's got about 400 million hits behind Google. And I just went, oh, well, really? really? Um, so, you know, I left them my number and we'll see what actually happens there. In the meantime, I've turned around and I've talked to um, any of my folks and mates down in Bluff and put the word out to Stuart Island. So if anybody's down there and they see this and they see this boat come in, very distinctive looking boat, um, take a couple of photographs, please send it our way. And what I'm really interested in is who's on board the boat. And, and the reason why I'm, I'm interested on the boat, uh, aside from its history, um, is because of the fact that, first of all, is the, the way that this boat's done things is that they've originally, there was obviously some notification this thing was good, there was a news flash saying out there saying that um, the boat was going to be arriving in, in uh, Dunedin uh, this morning. Uh, well, when I spoke to the security guards, they let it slip that the boat actually came in last night, so they made sure they came in before they got the media attention. Um, ODT guys were actually onto it, they actually saw the boat come in and, and um, you know, they got their own little stringers out there and they, uh, took a photo which didn't of course come out to the, to the paper this morning. Uh, pretty both good stories, background information on about who actually owned the boat. Um, some things which again I thought were interesting was that everyone keeps on mentioning the name of that oh, I was you know originally belonged to I think it was Edmund Khashoggi or whatever but it was like they've got the wrong Khashoggi uh, and that's on its Wikipedia file which actually was Adon Khashoggi so again if you look at the link below me um, I spell out there is not only the connections to Khashoggi but why they're actually quite important in terms of current terms, in terms of what Jeffrey Epstein was doing, in terms of he was the architect of the Clinton Foundation on the money laundering process. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a process which mirrored very much um, what they call the SP uh, trading or Wachovia Bank affair, which is significant two events. Uh, in 2009, a Russian Antonov uh, plane was found loading arms going to the Middle East. Um, that was registered a New Zealand firm and this finally hit the newspapers. This was after 20 years of me making people aware that these planes have been coming into New Zealand. I've got two books, State Secrets 1 and State Secrets 2, have documented these, these and photographed these planes um, and their connections quite often to the Saudi government uh, or even under contract to New Zealand Defence Forces or under contract to UN based charities even though they had an extensive uh, background, these planes had an extensive background on, on arms trafficking. Um, so even though they wrote this all off, they finally in 2009 realised, oh, actually might be something here, and they cover this sort of SP Wachobi affair. It was the the event, bigger event, however, again, bringing it up to current speed, was that the um, money laundering aspect of that, which related, related to a lot of oil shares that were being washed from New Zealand, um, was something that a, a an intelligence analyst called Cameron Altus was very, very interested in. I've been writing several stories basically uh, looking at the compromising of the Five Eyes Security Intelligence Network. Um, they predate by about six months the exposure of Cameron Altus, who turned out to be actually taking these, these Five Eyes secrets and on selling them to people that may actually also be connected to Chinese intelligence. Um, again, so, you know, what I'm basically pointing out saying is that what I've been writing about and, and, and deducing uh, the world's media has now actually caught up and, and validated my claims. Um, so, you know, in terms of that, uh, Wachovia, Asterbectel and Khashoggi, then it has very much a strong connection to New Zealand. Um, that's the past history. Let's get back to the, the, the boat called The Dancing here. The, the aspect why I actually rang them up, I mean, it was that A, I turned around and looked at the way that they were, you know, being quite securely, they've taken the boat and they've actually hidden who the ownerships are 
um, and even when you turn around, you look at different news stories where it's been in, in Australia, and you look at where it's been in the Pacific, they're being very keen to keep the owners and the people who are on the boat, which maybe you, you might have a situation where someone's actually leasing the boat, which again is very common with these types of pleasure yachts, but these people are being very careful to be keep out of camera frame. Um, for example, the video they released in the Pacific made a big point that, oh no, this is what a lovely time we are, but we don't need to show the people. Um, Again, they could have done that if they were just being privately secured, but there's a level of paranoia about their behavior, which is what's you know, twigged me. Uh, so I, as I look searching around, discovered that the last time that uh, Maxwell Giselle had actually been sighted uh, was in Monaco in June, where she was sighted with Prince uh, Andrew at an event held by Paris Hilton at the Monaco Yacht Club. You know, yacht. So my mind starts going, yacht, ring, alarm bell. So what I did was I did a background check, and sure enough, the, the boat, the dancing here, the last time it was in Monaco, coincides with the time that Maxwell Giselle was actually uh, last publicly sighted. So in terms of, you know, here's a woman that's been going out of her way to keep out of the cameras or, you know, as best as she can. Uh, I can't think of any I place of, you know, better to be in a situation where you're trying to keep a low profile than on a boat in the Pacific heading to New Zealand out of season because, again, it's this time of year it's starting to get killed. So normally the peak season for that sort of event is actually about two months earlier. So everything about this boat, the time it's arriving, the way that they're, they're actually carrying out security, uh, even where, they, where the boat was parked on Victoria Wharf, was it was, you know, parked in the part of the wharf in Dunedin, which is... Um, you know, making sure that it didn't draw attention to it. And even when I went there, I was, you know, took, went around the, kind of crept around the white side and took a photo so I could actually, you know, take a photo of, of the boat directly onto it because where I was before and I could only get a gap through the fence. Uh, the security staff, which they, they detailed specifically, um, as the ODT pointed out, um, for that boat, uh, were very like, oh, what are you doing? You know, and um, made sure that they turned around and took a photo of me as well. So again, all a little bit over the top. Uh, and, you know, I thought that was kind of interesting. So I said again, I've lived to the people, my mates in Bluff and Stewart Island to keep an eye out. Um, you see this boat, very distinctive looking boat. Please take a photograph of it. Keep an eye on it for who's on board, uh, especially if there are young children. Um, and because again, you know, that's, the other thing of course occurred that occurred to me was the fact that uh, we had a, a sighting of Madeleine Albright, the young child that was to die, uh, the, was kidnapped in uh, Europe several you know years ago. That was once well, you know, allegedly seen in Dunedin. Um, it's been one of those situations where they said, "Oh no, we're discounting that," but it, you know, it, it's it's one of those things where. You deal with authorities, you deal with media, and you expect them to be curious and, and lift up stones. But that, that always depends on the day that you pick up the phone and who you actually get. You know, quite often you can get someone who's actually quite lazy and they do the bare minimum. Um, so, you know, but I'm raised that point because there may be no connection at all, but it, it does, you know, when you're looking at who we're dealing with, what the profile is, it, it's worth bearing these things in mind. Uh, that's what's standing, of course, at what I've also been turning around and looking at uh, when we started looking at, you know, boats and so on that, you know, got interesting. Um, uh, caricatures, uh, you know, it, it reminded me again of people like Michael Swan, um, and, and uh, so I went and looked at a bit of this Michael Swan stuff. So I'll, I'll probably mention a bit of that stuff and raise it up as well because that's still on the news. Uh, but really, what we're actually looking at is um, the boat itself and the fact that it may potentially have um, Maxwell Giselle may actually be on that boat, um, a boat which was previously owned by a father who shared a very close relationship that has been on sold several times. Um, I can't think of a better place, you know, if you're trying to look your wounds to be. So anyway, that's my little, you know, con contribution in, into poking, you know, poking pics and uh, trying to get a bit of a, you know, curiosity to kind of focus on it because I said this is something that the whole entire world is actually quite interested in at the moment. Uh, our local media obviously don't quite pick up on that one, and um, but you know, I'm used to that. It's it's been my, you know, experience that that these guys are always a. a, a uh, a day late and a dollar short. Anyway, I think that's basically about enough for that today. I'm going to put a couple of links on there about uh, the Jeffrey Epstein thing, which is that whole New Zealand connection in terms of the banking, money laundering, cynic uh, sections, which again, if we have got people uh, that are on that boat, uh, you know, uh, there may be more reasons than just keeping out of the cameras while they're down here. Um, another thing which also kind of occurs to me in my mindset about looking at that boat was the name itself, the dancing here. Um, it has certain overtures in terms of um, 
pagan connections and again even the boat where the boat's named after is the, the French company that owns it that's actually the hometown of Picasso so again there's a sort of there's a few little ringing bells here and a few strings which I'm, I'm trying to pull out there uh, maybe nothing it may just be a rich guy who's bought a boat and he wants his privacy but I think there's there's enough there to to, to um, pique the curiosity and uh, see if we can dig a bit deeper and find out what we can find out thanks all for happy cheese and remember, the universe is just going to do what the universe... Oh my God, it's my bees tuned into a boy. Uh, stay safe and be, be good out there.